Snobbery is inherently a part of watches. It's almost unavoidable, sadly. I've never published a video where there wasn't some form of it down in the comments section. In fact, I've done several episodes analyzing why luxury marketing is mostly to blame and how it manipulates insecure people into believing that if they buy a more expensive watch, they are more important or a better person than the next. So today I share five brands and seven affordable new non-vintage watches under $1,000 that not only prove the watch snobs wrong, but some of the very same watch snobs have them in their own collections, alongside luxury heavyweights and even some super horterology timepieces. Okay, hi guys, and welcome to the show. Before we get into this, I've got to give credit where credit is due. Shout out to Kieran at Top Tier Tickers for inspiring the subject of today's video. And secondly, a quick wristwatch check, wearing the white shadow, Universal Genève, of course, designed by Gerald Genta with that record-breaking, ultra-thin automatic micro-rotor movement. Great example of something that is unquestionably watch snob. Proof. Once the bus goes 50 miles an hour, bomb is armed. If it drops below 50, it blows up. You have a hair trigger aimed at your head, what do you do? First, it's Casio. Now, in Kieran's video, he picked the Back to the Future calculator, highlighting a clever point that no matter how hard the Swiss innovate, they will never be able to make, mechanically at least, a watch that can do those types of computations, without resorting to a rudimentary solution like a slide rule of a navy timer bezel, obviously. So my pick will also be something traditional watches seldom achieve and has made Casio wildly successful and arguably snob-proof. We are, of course, talking about the humble, super-tough G-Shock. No G-Shock is as instantly recognizable, varied in the design options, materials, complications, cinematically famous, and has been on as many battlefields or space missions as the original G-Shock Square that started it all back in 1983. It will always be important for its industry-leading 10-meter drop-proof rating, shock resistance, along with that 10-layer case, and even breaking the Guinness World Record for the heaviest vehicle to drive over a watch. Listen, I said I bought a Rolex, right? That's not a cheap watch. I don't wear it because I don't want to get a scratch on it. <laughs> is that right? What? Is that true? What are you wearing right now? This is a G-Shock. A G-Shock, that's it's probably about $100. Most of you know by now that this is my favorite Casio from Mission Impossible. It's a bit divisive, okay? It's an acquired taste, a Marmite watch, if you will. It's not about my favorites. It's about what the watch snobs love or are the most kind of hated proof. And I think the square is not only the most historically important and achieved the most, it also can range from as little as 40, 50 bucks to sky's the limit. Even some crazy collectible ones as well. Just look at that. As you guys know, normally I'd probably put this in the lineup because in my opinion, when it comes to the best Swiss made divers under $1,000, the Squally 1521, especially the Azzurro here, is the undisputed champion, especially when it comes to heritage independent brands. But there is a new contender that ticks all these boxes. So you can roll your eyes back to the front, posi <laughs> to the front position. Let's take a look. It's not a squally, can you believe it? I'm not nominating a squally in here. I should though, I really should. 
Nevada Grenchen is a brand that I've talked a lot about this year and for good reason too. It's a brand that has been revived by one of the top rising young talents in the watch world, Guillaume Ledet. Think of him as a micro-brand Jean-Claude Beaver, if you will. Aside from Nevada Grenchen, he's also doing an amazing job bringing Vulcane to new glory and acclaim, and even some avant-garde groundbreaking new collaborations too. But to me, the most snob proof is Nevada Grenchen, as not only do they have some serious mid-century legitimate icons to pull from, like the iconic Chronomaster that watch aficionados go absolutely crazy for, or the Super Antarctic, and my very own F-77. But this brand has achieved all this remarkably quickly, without compromising quality or value for money. In fact, my pick for today's vid is the previously reviewed Depthmaster. With a modest 39mm radio mirror-like cushion case, an automatic soap rod inside, but most impressively of all, a 1000m depth rating, with an automatic helium escape valve at only $950. I struggle to think of any Swiss-made watch that beats this spec-wise for the price. So next is a choice that I have to completely agree with Kieran. It is of course Lacquer, one of the five prestigious legitimate makers of the original Fliegers back in World War II that continue to dominate and inspire the uh, pilot watch genre to this very day. But why them and not the other four? Unlike the other four brands, IWC, Elang Enzone, Stover and Vempe, Lacquer is the only one that can be purchased under $1,000. Now, how have they done this? Well, by cleverly offering budget-friendly versions with Japanese automatic Miotas inside or Swiss Quartz Ronda 503 movements instead of more expensive Swiss automatics, which it's still an option if you can stretch a smidgen over a grand. But more importantly, they offer these authentic Fliegers on a budget with the quintessentially Flieger Type A or Type B dial but in a crowd-friendly selection of 39, 40 or 42 mm sizes, as well as a choice of stunningly vibrant sunburst dial variations. But if you do desire a more historically period faithful version that no watch snob from a distance be able to distinguish from an IWC costing five or six times as much, they offer that too. So if you want those famous prestigious three words made in Germany on the dial, from one of the original big five, well, get in your Messerschmitt, prepare to take off, chocks away, as here you have it. to include Seiko, right? But there is one Seiko in particular that in my opinion encapsulates everything about the brand in terms of design, horological innovation, everything. More than the SKX, which at one point was the go-to choice, the humble SKX, they're holding its own among the big boys in the snobs collection the world over. Now I think the title goes to a different watch. Let's take a look. Ironically, Seiko is responsible for the quartz crisis in the first place, and thus inadvertently prompting the Swiss to pivot into a more lucrative luxury market in order to survive, and thus as a result creating snobbery-inducing elitist marketing to prey on the ignorant and insecure minds of the watch snob. Seiko is one of only a few brands that is completely vertically integrated. How does this differ from the term in-house? So you see, a watchmaker might be able to make their own proprietary calibers in-house, but they still need to buy in materials and components. Rolex and Seiko are on a list of a handful of brands that can do everything truly themselves. And deep down, the watch snobs know this. With their history going back 142 years, at the time of recording this narration, in my clothes closet no less, they have more world firsts than any other brand. Countless icons under their belt, and are capable of producing everything from a constant force tourbillon to the world's first GPS solar powered watch and everything imaginable in between. Really 007. 
Look, I haven't time for these adolescent antics. Now this is a fantastic book. You can pick it up on eBay, mostly in Japanese, but some in English, and you can still find out a ton of information. But what I wanted to say, actually, a fun little fact is my father, pictured here, he was a watch snob. He once made a disparaging remark about my flight master and just dismissed it as a made in China watch. Now, I don't know if he was joking, but just goes to show you there's watch snobs in every family, I guess. But anyway, veramente un caffone. So for my pick, it's the Arnie. But why this watch and not other icons like the Captain Willard, my own personal favourite, the beloved Flighty, or the Seiko Monster, and countless others worthy of nomination? Well, aside from its fun pop culture nostalgia factor, it has a genuine world first of being the first Annie Digi diver with an alarm and chronograph, making it highly useful. It was issued to US Navy SEALs, and it borrows design cues from many other famously innovative Seiko dive watches, like the Tuna Shrouded Case, for example, or the 6309 handset and analog section of the dial layout. But above all that, I mean, just look at it. It's just so distinctive and aggressive, not to mention it stars in several of the best and most macho preparation montage sequences in cinematic history. The new reissues now have the benefit of solar, and the fact that it is quartz is a fitting sweet bit of revenge to pour further salt on the quartz crisis wound. We should not drink and bake. Kieran used an interesting expression that I've never heard used on the watch before when talking about his choice of G-Shock. He referred to it as a god-tier watch. Well, that's how I feel about the Arnie when you absolutely positively got to emasculate every watch snob in the room, except no substitute. System will go internal at the 17 second mark. So it's uh, no secret that I am a massive fan of Boulevard. Dotted around the war room, you'll see all kinds of accoutrements and objets d'art. Actually, even behind me right now, there's a book there. That's a beautiful big book there, given to me by my good friend JD, the same JD from the Vertex video. If you missed that video, I'll leave a link there. But the veteran who um, brought along his amazing Dirty Dozen watch. But anyway, we're not talking about that. We're talking about Boulevard my respect and admiration of this brand has grown immensely, especially since touring their private museum inside the Empire State Building last year. It became immediately apparent just how much the brand's history is inextricably linked to modern American history, far more than all the other American watch brands put together. But Bulliver's indelible connection to endless military watches, countless icons and world-changing technologies still to this day, in fact, I might add, has not been lost on the watch snobs either. Compared to most brands on the list, it's one of the few that actively listens to the feedback from the watch enthusiast community and acts on it, quite swiftly in fact. Case in point, this year's oceanographer GMT that we talked about last month. But astonishingly, it does this while still being able to maintain the balance of mainstream appeal, and being in every other mall in the United States of America. In a moment, I'm going to share my selection for the ultimate snob-proof Bulova. But before I do that, I want to show you a great example of a newer release that is a perfectly timed reaction to the 1970s sports watch trend without being just another Gerald Genta ripoff and highlights a crucially important point about Bulova. So this is the Jetstar, a 2023 new release based on the Jetstar of the 1970s, but updated in a 40 millimeter size. So I saw a view on this watch, and for the life of me, I can't remember who it was, but they made an excellent point. We forget that the Precisionist is super high frequency, uh, you know, with the smooth sweep, very much like a kind of Grand Seiko. It's an in-house caliber. I forget that too. And I think for around $500, it's a pretty impressive Oh God, I'm not gonna say the cliche, value proposition. It's also a very fitting continuation of the Accutron legacy. So what is my pick for the Boulevard that even snobs can't help but love? Well, again, I have to agree with Kieran's choice. However, for a very different reason. 
By now, most of you are aware how this watch became famous and known as the Lunar Pilot. Astronaut Dave Scott was wearing his NASA-issued Amiga Speedy, and because the G-Shock had not been invented yet, the crystal popped off just before he was about to take a lovely stroll on the moon. So he replaced it with his own backup, a Bulliver. And boom, there you have it, a legend is born. But my reason for picking it is a little bit more to do with what the brand did in a much wider scale. You see, most of the Apollo space program utilized Bulliver's revolutionary pre-quartz Accutron tuning fork electronic timing technology in most of the spacecraft, rockets, and even back on Earth at HQ. Without its ability to be accurate in severe temperature variations and the turbulent conditions of space travel, mankind would have never left the orbit of our planet, let alone being able to put men on the moon. Apollo 15 broke several records. The first use of the lunar rover, the first deep space walk by L. Wharton, the heaviest payload in lunar orbit at 107,000 pounds, and the longest crewed lunar mission of 295 hours. To bring our total number of recommendations up to seven, now for three quick honorable mentions. Firstly, there is the Max Bill by German heritage brand Junghans. It's a legitimate icon, named after its creator, the design polymath and Bauhaus school pioneer. While a cultureless Philistine might confuse it for a modern fashion watch, it was first launched in 1961 and was the original less is more trend setter. Many of course imitate this style, but it never feels quite right. As believe it or not, this is designed in accordance to Max Bill's strict mathematical design theories. So there's a real art to it that you just cannot replicate. The great thing is you can still pick up a manual wind period correct 34 mm to have infinitely more class and taste than any Richard Mille, Rolex AP or Patek wearer in the room, all for less than a grand. Our brand is 80 years old, but many people throughout the world haven't even heard of the Marathon Watch Company. We really didn't want to be a known brand. We just wanted to manufacture excellent watches specifically for military purposes. Secondly, we have Marathon. While most of their automatic stuff is over a grand, you can still get a quality Swiss-made high-end quartz with tritium-based luminescence in styles for either land, sea or air. Issued to US, Canadian and Israeli special forces, these ultra-utilitarian mil-spec watches are the real McCoy. If you see them in the wild, like I have, it only means two things, or maybe perhaps both. Firstly, the wearer is not to be messed with, or secondly, they are a serious enthusiast who appreciates unpretentious watches that are so tough they also can double as a knuckle duster, especially useful if you feel the urge to put a watch snob in their place or to vanquish an enemy. <laughs> Lastly, speaking of military watches, we could not complete this list without the Hamilton Khaki 38mm Mechanical which is an absolute must in my opinion. While no longer a family-owned independent brand like Marathon, it benefits from being the best of the entry-level Swiss-made Swatch group. While most of the cost-cutting modular new generations of ETA movements does compromise my own respect for Longines, Tissot and mid to high-end Hamilton, here, however, it makes total sense, being utilized in this more honest manual wind Vietnam field watch era inspired classic. I currently have a vintage original, but in the rare Averick style variation, which today's version is actually descended from. So this is a 2023 update of the previous Lunar Pilot, and they've made it smaller to 43 millimeters instead of 40, uh, what was it, 45, that's right. It sounds like a lot, and it wasn't made large in the first place for any particular trend, it's just to enhance legibility, but I do love how the short lugs make it, you know, even on my small wrist, it still works. But it's not the Speedmaster-esque design cues that we need to talk about. What is really impressive is what's going on inside. Just like the Jetstar, we have a movement that blends their heritage of super high frequency movements, and not to the space view, of course, but this time with a Miyota made, and therefore proprietary as it is within house, or I should say within group at Citizen, and utilize it in a very clever, but above all practical manner. 
that actually outperforms most of, if not all, the analog quartz chronographs currently on the market. The Caliber NP20 is a high precision quartz with an ultra high frequency that is proudly displayed on various parts of the watch. This staggering amount is eight times greater than standard quartz, resulting in an accuracy of seconds per year. And the chronograph can then measure 1 20th of a second too. Now this new release is not perfect. I'd be doing you an injustice if I didn't tell you about the ghost date position and unfortunately a non-tapering bracelet that is, well, a little unrefined in my opinion and adds a lot of unnecessary weight. But for around twice the price of a plastic moon swatch that is equal in quality of something you'd find in a cereal box, this is a serious bit of kit with real heritage. I love this new update and I especially appreciate how they've used the Snoopy colors in a cheeky play on one of the most sought after Speedmasters by using that Air Force Blue, but adding a kind of moon surface texture to that white multi-layered dial. In fact, there's so many interesting things going on here and design choices from those Cadillac wing pushers to how the sapphire actually protects the bezel, which is certainly a weak point on the exposed speedy aluminum bezel. So unequivocally, pure class. So there we have it. Massive thank you to Kieran at Top Tier Tickers. I will leave a link to his fantastic channel in the description below. Also guys, very important, do add your thoughts, nominations, suggestions for watches under $1,000 that are snob proof or that the snobs absolutely love. And yeah, do share that good stuff in the comments. I'll catch you in the next one. Don't forget to like this video, especially if you want to see more free independent content like this. Onwards and upwards. Thank you for watching. Ciao.